Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new Atari 400 Mini. This little mini computer will cost $120, and it comes to us from a company called Retro Games. They may sound familiar because they also made the really cool Amiga 500 Mini, as well as the Commodore line of mini computers that I've enjoyed messing around with in my game room. And they were kind enough to send me this groovy 70s inspired press kit, as well as a system for review. Even though it's called the 400 Mini, it actually emulates the entire 8-bit Atari computer range. So that includes the 400, the 800, as well as the XL and XE series of computers. And it'll also play Atari 5200 home console games. And like their other mini computers, this one is a love letter to the 80s and those classic home computers. And this comes with 25 built-in games. However, if you happen to have an Atari VCS joystick, well, if you plug that in here, it'll unlock additional games, which is pretty cool. My buddy, the immortal John Hancock discovered this, and I'll put a link to his video showing that in the description below. And this thing is small. It's really small. Now here it is compared to a Nintendo 3DS. And then I'm also gonna throw a PS5 controller on there just to kind of give you an example of just the, the size of this thing. It's, it's gonna fit pretty much on any shelf, any game room, any office desk that you would wanna put it on. And obviously you wanna know what you get with this. So in addition to the mini computer, you also get a, a 2600 style Atari joystick. But this thing has some little secrets with it. It's actually pretty wild. So to start with, it's USB, and it also has two buttons in the front. You have home and also menu. But then you also have in the corner, down on the corner there, you have an extra button that's kind of hidden and you can map that to whatever you want. But it doesn't stop there because the ring, that classic ring that goes around the joystick, that's another four buttons. So you have buttons on the top and bottom and also on the left and right, which can be mapped to a bunch of different functions because you know, if you think about it, this is trying to emulate a, a home computer. And unfortunately, it's so small that the keyboard doesn't actually work. So in order to do the things that you would need to do in a, you know, in a computer game, you have all of these different buttons that are built into this classic style joystick to basically help you navigate and play those games. I have to admit, it's pretty clever what they did here. This is a pretty awesome solution. However, just a little preview that when we get into some of the games, it may be trying to take on a little bit too much, but we're gonna get to that. I should also mention that in the box, you also get a HDMI cable as well as a USB power cable. This outputs 720p over HDMI, but interestingly, it supports 50 and 60 Hertz. That's important to know because depending on the refresh rate that you choose when you're setting this up, well, the speed and also the sound of the game may change. And depending on if you played these games in the past on real hardware, say in the 1980s, well, that refresh rate changes everything drastically. So it's cool actually that it gives you the option. Walking around the device here in the front, you have four USB ports. So you can plug in four wired controllers if you want and do four player gaming, which is pretty cool. Note that the top of this doesn't open where in a real computer you would actually plug in cartridges. This is all kind of just for show really, but where the keyboard membrane would be, it actually kind of feels like a real one there. Again, it's not functional, but it's, it's a little details that they put into this for the you know really hardcore fans of this thing. On the back, you have another USB-A port where you can plug in a thumb drive. So you're not limited to just the 25 games that come with this. If you wanna add your own games, it's pretty easy to do. And we're gonna check that out in a bit. That's where you plug the HDMI cable into. That's where you plug in your USB-C power cable. And then that's the power button. That's pretty much it, pretty simple. All right, so let's go ahead and turn it on and check it out. On the main menu here, it's very similar to some of the other mini computers that they've released. You basically have this carousel down below there that you can cycle through the 25 installed games and you can see a lot of information about them there. But we're gonna go ahead and jump into the options really quick. There aren't a ton of them, but there are a couple in there that you might wanna mess around with. Under display is where you can choose if you want to have the aspect ratio either four by three, or if you want it to be pixel perfect. Now, pixel perfect means that the pixels are actually perfectly square 
and therefore it's a little bit wider than maybe what you remember, or you can choose four by three, it's up to you. You have the ability to enable the CRT effect, which is essentially just artificial scan lines. Some people like these and some people don't. This was really interesting for me because if I was playing a game that had a darker background, like say with Battlezone, you see Battlezone here, or uh, I guess Centipede was another one. I, I didn't really like the CRT effect turned on, but in Crystal Castles, which is a lighter game, I actually thought it looked pretty cool. So just keep in mind that you have this option here if you prefer one way or the other. And since none of these games were designed to stretch out and fill a modern television, you, you have the ability to choose a frame if you want, basically a, a border around if you want. I think it looks pretty good. You can also change the language that it runs in. And then under advanced options, you have things like changing the background music level. And also there will be updated firmwares that will come out over time. And this is where you can kind of get information as to what current firmware that you're running right now. And you can also reset it to factory if you need to. Back on the main menu, when you've highlighted a game, you get a nice little description in the upper left there. And you can always push up on the joystick to get specific help as to the controls of that particular game. So it changes depending on the game, because again, this can play all these different computers and also the 5200. So the controls often change greatly. So pretty much every time before I went in to play a game, I would look to see just how all those buttons were mapped. If you push down on the joystick, you get access to the save games. And I love how they made it look like actual Atari 400 cartridges here. So that's pretty cool. You can also at any time sort the list however you want and also mark some of them as your favorites. All right, let's go ahead and play some games. And we're gonna jump into Asteroids, which I'm sure you are all familiar with. Now, what's cool about that controller again is that it's mapped to specific buttons that you would have had in the real computer. So here you can see that Pushing the rings, you can change, for instance, some of the settings in the game before you even start it. So you can change whether you want bouncing to be on or off, or maybe if you want the asteroids to be fast or slow. You see this done in even more complicated games like Star Raiders 2. So Star Raiders 2 is a space shooting exploration game and has all sorts of things like maps, as well as the ability to, to turn on and off shields and things like that. And so it actually uses quite a few of the different functions of this controller. One of my favorite things that's going on in retro games right now is all of these these specialized mini computers that are coming out. And it's really fun for me because like I said, I didn't have an Atari 400 growing up. And so the games included in here are pretty fun to jump into because it's a mix of, you know, games I might be familiar with in the arcades or on my Commodore 64, but also some games I've never heard of. Like Airball, I've never heard of this game before and it instantly reminded me of I guess kind of like Marble Madness, you know, where it's isometric and you're controlling a ball, or in this case, it's actually it's a balloon, uh, through this kind of pseudo 3D environment. It's actually pretty nice looking. This is kind of fun. The version of Berserk on here is fantastic because I mostly played this on my Atari 2600 and that one didn't have the voices. So this was a nice little surprise. I love playing Boulder Dash on my Commodore 64 and this Atari version of it is excellent. This is still a really fun game all these years later. As a matter of fact, I recently bought the Switch version of this. They did a physical version for the Switch. And so to go back and play the original was really cool. This is a great game. A neat feature that they've added here is rewinding the gameplay. And this works with games that are installed on this and also any games that you happen to add. At any moment, you can press home and left, and that'll interrupt the gameplay and bring up these rewind controls on the left-hand side of the screen. I believe it's auto-capturing the last 40 seconds of gameplay, so it's nice that if you die, you can basically just go back and try it again. Another game I was not familiar with is Bristles. I went into this completely blind, not knowing what the heck this was, and it turns out it's actually a pretty fun game where you are a painter and you're trying to paint walls while going up and down these elevators and avoiding all these things that want to take you out. It reminded me a little bit of elevator action mixed in with maybe Keystone Capers. Capture the Flag was a bit of a surprise because, you know, back in the early 80s, true 3D games was very uncommon. 
the computers were just not powerful enough to do this in general. You know, certainly on the Commodore, I'm trying to think if there were any at the time that could run this smoothly. So not necessarily my favorite game in, in this collection here, but it does, it technically, it seems pretty impressive. I love me some racing games, so I was excited to see this one I've never played before called Electric Glide. And I guess you are a futuristic motorcycle. It's a first person, you know, arcade style racing game. And yeah, it's pretty fun. Next up, I checked out some Stone Cold classics in the 8-bit era, and that is Mule and also Seven Cities of Gold. Now, I haven't played these games in decades, and they're more complex than the standard arcade style games that are included on this list. So much so, actually, that I'd kind of forgotten how to play specifically Mule. It's been so long. And that's where I was like, it would be really nice if they had worked in the manual into, into this somehow. I mean, you're not gonna need the manual for most of the games, but for these particular ones, it would have been nice if there was a way in the actual menu to bring it up and look at it. Kind of like what they did with, you know, maybe the Atari 50th anniversary or kind of what Evercade does, just give you a little bit more information about how to actually play the game, especially for people either who haven't played it in decades like me, or maybe they're just even new to it. Now they do tell you that they're gonna have the manuals on their website, which is great. I mean, that's something for sure, but I don't know. It just would have been nice to have it integrated into the actual system itself. Another game that was a total surprise, I was not familiar with it, is Yoomp. I think this came out in 2007, so it must be a newer release. And wow, this is actually a really cool game where you basically are this bouncing ball and you're just simply trying to survive as the, the level just scrolls towards you and you move in a 360 circle. It's really cool. I was, I was blown away by this. However, I did run into a bit of a snag with the controller. I mentioned that I grew up with the Commodore 64 as a kid and one of my favorite games on that was Bruce Lee. And so I was really curious to fire this up on the 400 Mini because I'm very, very familiar with the, the Commodore version of it. And while the game looks fantastic on here, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. I was like, what is going on with this controller? The controller doesn't seem to want to let you go left or right. It's really weird. It was constantly making me jump and duck. I could, I could barely move left or right. It was really bizarre. It was like ruining this game for me. I was like, what is going on here? And that's when I remembered that the 400 Mini also works with a bunch of other wired controllers. So I happen to have an Xbox 360 wired controller sitting around. I plug that in and the analog thumbsticks work perfectly. So I was like, what is going on? Like, why is this game not working with the controller that it actually ships with? I ran into a similar issue with another game installed in here called O'Reilly's Mine, where again, for whatever reason, it just didn't want to go smoothly left or right. It was very jerky. I couldn't figure it out. I, I kind of had to constantly sort of tap the joystick in the direction I wanted to go. And that seemed to work okay, but that's really weird. So then I was like, okay, do I have a defective joystick or something? What's going on here? Well, I reached out to the company that makes it and they got back to me and they basically said that the CX stick strikes a balance between responsiveness for fast action games and single direction accuracy. The harder you push on the stick, the more responsive it is to diagonal movements, which is generally what you want to do in fast action settings. Games such as Lee do benefit from a lighter, more accurate approach. So that's pretty interesting. And once they told me that, I was like, really, am I actually pushing on the joystick that hard? But I was, I guess. I went back after they told me that and I use a much lighter touch to the, to the joystick and it seemed to work much better. It wasn't perfect. It still would kind of make him duck and jump sometimes when I didn't expect him to. I suspect what's going on here is that this one mini computer and this controller is trying to emulate a bunch of different scenarios across all these different computers and, and game types. And so that's just a concession that they had to make. I wanted to mention it because for me, I actually thought the, the joystick was broken. Again, it would work fine in other games, no problem. But these two, for whatever reason, it was unplayable until they actually told me that. 
And again, I think what was throwing me off is that I played this game for years on my Commodore 64 with a real Atari joystick and never had an issue. So again, if you get this and you are wondering what's going on, I hope that helps you. All right, let's say that you checked out the 25 games that are included on here. Now you wanna play some other games that are available and you can find on the internet. The way you do that, it's very easy. So you basically just copy them onto a FAT32 formatted USB stick, pop it into the console itself. And basically what happens is that it'll show up under media access. So you basically just scroll over to media access and then you go into that and there is your list of games. You don't have to put them in a special folder. Basically, it'll just show you the file system and you can just go from there. And when you do that, it drops that file, the 400 underscore basic in there. I saw that, I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Now, unfortunately, I don't know Atari basic, so I couldn't really do anything in here, but I did plug in a standard USB keyboard just to see if it actually would detect it. And sure enough, as you see here, yeah, it works just fine. So that's pretty cool because then you can go in here and make your own little home programs. You can kind of mess around with it. You can use it like a real computer. Now, maybe you don't want to plug in an actual keyboard. You want to keep it simple. Well, this does allow you to bring up a virtual keyboard at any time. You basically just press the home and menu button and you see it populates over on the right hand side there. There are a bunch of different formats that this will detect and work with, but you can always go into the game settings and take a look at kind of what's going on there. So by default, it'll try to launch everything with the Atari 800 because that is the most compatible, but if it's not working for some reason, you can come in here and then manually tell it, oh, choose the Atari 5200 or the 800 XL. You can also enable and disable if the game would require basic. So that's what that option is there. You can also mess around with the display settings. I actually had to do this when I launched Frogger. So when I first launched Frogger, you see it here. Well, it looks like it's kind of cut off on the bottom and it's not quite fitting the screen. And then once I went into the game settings, adjusted a little bit the height and also the vertical offset, well, then it suddenly displayed just fine. You can also mess around with the control type. So depending on the game, you might need to go in and map the controls because remember that these are computer games and they're gonna assume that you have a keyboard. Well, if you don't wanna mess around with the keyboard, you may not have to go in there and map them to the different buttons on that controller and you should be just fine. And if you're gonna be playing Atari 5200 games, you're gonna deal with that funky controller, which I am not a fan of. So it's great that you can come in here and mess with the settings and the mappings and how it translates a modern controller over to what the game expects. So this is a really nice feature here to, in my opinion, actually make 5200 games a little bit more accessible, or maybe what I should say is a little bit more playable. This also supports games that came on multiple floppy disks. The only time it gets a little bit tricky is if there's more than three disks, you end up having to create a playlist and the manual will help you do that. I did notice that not every game I tried would run on this and I'm not entirely sure why. Here's a game I'm trying to get to work called Droll and no matter what setting I go in there, manually choosing different types of Atari computers, it just doesn't seem to want to launch and I'm not sure why, and this wasn't the only game that gave me that problem. I would say probably 80% of the games I tried would run, but I'm not sure why the others didn't. I suspect this will be addressed in, you know, an upcoming firmware. So what do I think of this thing? Well, you know, at the end of the day, I actually really like what this company does. I love the fact that they are out there bringing these classic 80s computers into the modern era in these really small form factors. And it's only 120 bucks and includes those 25 licensed games. Plus you can easily add your own and there are hundreds of them out there that if you're like me, you've never played them before. And so it's a pretty neat opportunity to get in there and play some classic 1980s computer games, right? My only knock against this is really that controller doesn't work perfectly with every game that it comes with. And Maybe that's just unrealistic. And to be honest, you can easily use a Xbox or a PlayStation controller or an 8-bit Doe controller. So it's, it's not really that big of a deal, but I figured I should mention it, especially since everything else about that controller is pretty great. But I would love to know what you think. Are you gonna pick up the 400 Mini anytime soon? And 
Let me know what other 8-bit Atari games you think I should check out on this. Cause like I said, I'm a total noob and I am willing to jump in. I think that'd be pretty cool. So give me a list of games you think I should check out down in the comments below. And as always guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.